Welcome to KJV Cafe. Thanks for taking time out of your day to listen. Each episode of the cafe is dedicated to studying the Bible verse by verse from Genesis through Revelation. Your host here at the cafe is Bible teacher Clark Covington. Looks like the coffee is hot and ready, so let's get started. Amen, glory to God. Welcome to the program. Welcome to the cafe. Pastor Clark Covington here with another episode of KJV Cafe. Thank you so much for joining us. Technically speaking, we are on part two, episode 259 of season two, looking at Genesis 19 through 26. Amen. Woo, there's a lot there. You should see our file names for all these episodes. Uh, a lot here, but you know, practically speaking, we're just going verse by verse through the Bible and we're in Genesis 19 looking at one verse right now, verse 26. And we're looking at this kind of startling verse. You know, they, they escape, Lot and his family escape out of Sodom and Gomorrah, out of the cities of the plain that were burned down there because there was a group of cities burned down. They escaped by God's angels. And I, I got to believe, not fully sure exactly how far, but miles, right? This isn't like, a few steps, you know, they're going miles away to get out. They get out by the grace of God through his angels. They're commanded not to look behind for them to, to them, but to go to the mountain at first lots disobedient by saying, I'm not going to the mountain. We see how that turned out. And now the wife is disobedient here in verse 26. She looks back, but his wife looked back from behind him and she became a pillar of salt. Okay. So today what we're looking at is this idea of the power of the flesh to cause us to do things we wouldn't want to do. Maybe you've been in an argument before. I know I have where maybe you say something that you really shouldn't have said, right? And it's just the flesh is getting the best of you, you know? Or, you know, you try to defend yourself when you shouldn't, or I don't know what. And as we get older, Okay, we start maybe not older, but older in the faith. Okay, like you could be 15, but if you learn this principle, more power to you, you know, you don't have to wait till you're 44 like me. But when we get older, we learn this idea of like reining ourselves in, right? I went for a run yesterday and my run is probably your fast walk. Okay, like it's not, it's nothing of Olympic speed, um, but I'm trying, you know, I get out there and I run. I try to run for a good bit of time. At this point, Lord willing, the asthma is not too bad and Lord's really blessed. So I'm out there running uh, for a very, uh, a long time, okay? I'm out there, I'm out there, I'm chugging along. And um, I'm at this park on like this little side road. And I'm like, uh, just finishing my run, I tell myself, I'm gonna run to this tree and turn around. I run to the tree, I turn around. There was no cars on the road. It's like, again, a little like driveway to a like back parking lot of a big park, you know? I turn around and somebody, this kid, like lays on the horn. You know, and I turn around, just threw my arms up in the air. And he was like, oh, I'm sorry. I guess he didn't know how loud his horn would be. I, I guess he wanted to give me a little beep beep. And me coming from New York, I, I you know, I'm very familiar with horns and uh, their use. In the South, you got to be careful. I always tell my family I'm careful to honk the horn in the South because, you know, we, people don't do it. They're much more polite here. We all wave. In fact, at that park, everyone you pass, you got to wave at them. You know, you're in the South. Um but like I threw up my hands and I, and I walked over to the grass and I told myself like, calm down, you know, you know, you know, he, he goes around his parked, you know, his car and stuff. And I was like, just calm down. And I just, I calmed down. I'm not mad at him. I don't, you know, it might've been, a, he looked like he was an accident. You know, the other person in the car was waving like they were sorry. I guess I was in the road. You know, the point is this, the self-realization, right. To have something happen that might, um, desire one response from the flesh, right? The flesh wants to, you know, whatever, argue, confront, you know, be back. I don't know. And the spirit is like, don't worry about it. You know, God's in control. At least you didn't get hit. You know, you know, you're still alive, you know, just go, go get your Gatorade, go home, whatever it is. Right. The spirit is always right. Okay. And so in this circumstance, and I know that that's a simple example, but it happened yesterday and maybe the Lord allowed it to happen for me to give this example of like what we would desire to do versus what the spirit wants us to do. In that example, you know, the, the younger person would want to be like, wow, how dare you call, you know, I was just over here, you know, but you realize, you know what, leave it alone. Lot's wife 
if she had just said the angels, they're angels, like they're God's emissaries, they must be right. I'm going to the mountain, right? If she had just said that instead of being like, oh, Sodom, oh, Gomorrah, oh, let me look back on it. Oh, the good times we had. Oh, there are my girlfriends burning down or my family's, you know, my extended family, like my son's-in-law or oh, this or that. You know, instead of uh, being thankful to God leading her out, she's lamenting what she's leaving, right? She's lingering. She's lamenting. She's reflecting upon the destruction of sin and, and probably not in a good way, right? And so how on earth is literally your known world? You remember, you know, this coming up here, Lot's daughters think they're the only people alive on the earth. How is your own earth literally burning down by the hand of God and you don't fear God enough to listen to him? Like if you don't fear God, then when, when are you going to fear God? And so let's not make the same mistake. What we'll do is we'll take a break and we're going to get into like the underlying spiritual aspect of this when we come back. So stay tuned. You're listening to KJV Cafe. We encourage you to look us up on your favorite podcast app and subscribe to our channel on YouTube. Now let's get back to some more in-depth Bible study. All right. So the underlying spiritual aspect here is that the wife didn't listen, was disobedient to God, turned into a pillar of salt, not knowing her whole life, her testimony, whether she knew the Lord or not. But let's just say she didn't. And she falls into this trap of coveting, of desiring something she no longer has, of wanting things that are ungodly that God didn't give her. She ends up in hell. And who who's in hell? The devil and his fallen angels. And so the devil's like, gotcha there, right? And here in society today, we still have the devil's uh, practice at hand, right? That, 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 that people are struggling with satis- satisfaction, You know, was Lot satisfied with the angels helping her to escape? Obviously not, because she turned back to reflect on what was going on in Sodom when they told her not to. Are you satisfied with what God has given you? Can you honestly say that you're content in your life? Are you acting content in your life? Here's a mystery. God put us here in a world full of things and people and events that claim to make us content, but cannot fulfill the promise. We have an emptiness in our heart that only God can fill. And yet when we try to fill that emptiness with material goods, with status, with busyness, with, with, with self-reflection, with pitying these things, with, with, with all types of living, it never works to fulfill that emptiness in our heart. And yet when we focus on God, poor or rich, sick or healthy, we can have true contentment in our lives. We can be joyful even today no matter what state you're in. There have been times when I have been awfully sick and very joyful. There's been times when I've been awfully healthy and focused on the wrong things and been very discontent, right? Luke 12, 15. And he said unto them, take heed and beware of covetousness for a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. Wow, isn't that radical? So Jesus is saying, take heed, pay attention and beware Don't covet, right? A man's life consists not in the abundance of the things which he possesses. The things that you have doesn't make you who you are. And if you don't have something, by the way, what's the world's, what's the world's answer to this? And again, the little G God of this world, the devil wants you to think you have to have stuff. Oh, you don't have the latest phone or you don't have the latest car or you don't have the, 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 the big house or you don't have the title at work. Or you need those things to be happy. How can you be happy without those things? You need those things. In order for you to have life, you, you, the devil wants you to think that you need material things, uh, things in this culture, status and so forth. And it's all a sham. It's all a sham, right? We fall so short every single day that what we truly need is time with God, the living water, life, the light, the bread of life. All of these ideas and names for God point to the fact that he is our solution. There's a billboard I brought up many times. It's still somewhere there in Shelby. It says, Jesus is the answer to all your problems. It's got a black background and big, I think it's yellow text, yellow or orange or something, big bright text, yellow, I think it is. Jesus is the answer to all your problems. And the lost person will look at that and say foolishness. And the Bible will say that's biblical. The preaching of the gospel is foolishness. 
uh, to them that won't believe, but salvation to them that will, right? And so we see that when we look to Jesus, he is the answer to all of our problems, right? He is the one that gives us fulfillment. Had to look that verse up there about foolishness. Make sure I put that in there. 1 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 18, For the preaching of the cross is to them that perish foolishness, but unto us which are saved it is the power of God. It goes on, verse 19, For it is written, I will destroy the wisdom of the wise, and will bring to nothing the understanding of the prudent. Wow. You know, it's, uh, it's incredible. I saw a speech the other day about uh, from Rosaria Butterfield, and I don't have time to get into her whole story, but it's an incredible story. I've heard her testimony on the radio before. This was a commencement speech. It was like 35 minutes. Incredible. If you haven't had time, look up Rosaria Butterfield. You can look her up on YouTube, on the web, so forth. She was a feminist professor at Syracuse, a very successful one. She had earned tenure, which is very hard to do. Syracuse is a great university uh, in the world's eyes, especially. And she was a tenure professor. She was a feminist. She was openly a lesbian, all these things. And through the hospitality of a minister there and his family and over a graceful witness and over a loving witness to both point her to the Lord, but also show her that she is not living as God would have her to live, that homosexuality is actually an abomination to a holy God. She gets saved. She gets on fire for God. She marries uh, a preacher herself. And she points out all of this idea of these flaw of the wisdom of the wise, of the foolishness of the wisdom of the wise. It's an incredible account. Any, I mean, really, I'm sure any time she's spoken has, has given this, but certainly his commencement speech, I think it was at Liberty University. There's uh, radio programs I've heard her on. So Rosaria Butterfield, look it up. R-O-S-A-R-I-A, Butterfield, just as you'd imagine, one word, B-U-T-T-E-R-F-I-E-L-D, uh, wow, she's, her testimony is fantastic. Um, and listen to it if you're of a certain denomination, whatever denomination you are, and, and take pause because she may be from a different denomination. And that also shows you that uh, being spot on with the Bible doesn't rely on your denomination. That's a headline right there. Uh, it really doesn't because she, she, you know, whew, she really brought, brought it Uh as an academic would. And I thought to myself, there's many reasons I'm sure the Lord saved her, but one is to bring forth for those that would look into it, this idea of the foolishness of the wise and, and of the wisdom that is in God's ways. And going back to the idea of coveting, we're living in a world that is run by the wise in terms of the politicians and so forth, uh, run by these folks that think they're wise. We're living in a culture and society that has legalized things that they have deemed good that go against God's ways, whether it be drugs or any other uh, a bad thing that's now legal. Amen. There's dispensaries all around our town now, our little town that used to be, I, I, as I understand it, a dry town. Uh, at one point, there's distilleries open and there's casinos and there's drugs. And this is the buckle of the Bible belt. I can't imagine what the cities look like. We're in the last days. The wise thinks this is a good idea. The wise thinks that there's some kind of tax revenue coming. So destruction is sure. The majority of people are on the wide path to destruction and hell. And you want to get on that narrow path. And that starts with understanding of heeding the word of God and, and trusting that his word is profitable to you, right? Was, it, was his word, God's word, profitable to Lot's wife? It certainly would have been because they were trying to save her life. And I say try because God didn't um, force her to not turn around, right? It doesn't say that he channeled her to only go forward and not allow her to look back. And the same is true with the believer today. We're not forced to live for God. He will not create robots in us, as my wife says. God didn't create a robot. We are given free will. And with that free will, we can show him we love him and we can show him our obedience and we can show him uh, our faithfulness and gratitude and so forth, or with that free will, we can fall into sin. We can fall into the, to the wages of sin, which is death, and we can fall into the trap of the world. It's up to us. God's given us free will. By the power of the Spirit, let us turn to Him. We'll get to more in the next episode. Tune in then. Thank you for listening. Take care. God bless, and amen. For spending time with us today at the cafe, we would love to hear from you. You can email Brother Clark directly at clark at enduringpromise.org. 
See you again tomorrow. Same time, same place.